My name is Jeremy. I'm with VMG Studios. I'm an audio engineer and video editor, and welcome to the Creative Toolkit for Marketers video on making your VO sound great. I wrote an article about this, and this is the video supplement for that. So whether you're watching on YouTube, or whether you're watching via the email, or whether you're on our website watching it now, wherever you are, wherever, we're gonna process some voiceover files and uh, use some techniques to make them sound better, and I'm gonna explain to you how that works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using Adobe Audition here. Adobe Audition is the multi-track recorder and digital audio workstation and audio editor that comes with the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, these techniques you should be able to apply to most digital audio workstations, whether that's Pro Tools or Ableton or Logic or even GarageBand if you have the tools that I'm using. I'm gonna be primarily using Isotope Nectar uh, for our vocal processing and the Isotope RX Suite which are tools that I've been using for a very long time. Don't worry if you don't have those, these techniques should apply to the tools that come with your digital audio workstation. We're gonna to try to make this as basic as possible so that at home or in your office, if you have access to tools that are similar to these, you'll be able to reproduce what we're doing today. So I've uh, recorded a couple VO tracks here, one that we're gonna to use to demonstrate noise reduction and gating, and the other one we're gonna to use to demonstrate making things sound better than they already are. Let's get started with the noise reduction and gating one because those are the things that I would usually start with when processing a vocal. So I'm gonna go down here to my track effects. I have my uh, VO track right here and I'm going to select a VST and I'm gonna select Nectar 3. Isotope Nectar is a vocal processing suite that has multiple processors that you can put in various orders to make your vocals sound better. And uh, we're gonna start over here with a gate. I talk about this in the article. Um, a gate, or noise gate, as they're sometimes referred to, is a dynamics processor that looks at the audio level coming in, and when it gets below a certain threshold, or the closed threshold here, um, it's going to take the audio and make it quieter by this ratio amount right here. So this determines how much quieter it gets, the attack determines how fast it gets quieter, and the release determines how fast the gate opens up again after it passes over the open threshold. So let's go ahead and play this audio real quick and listen to what we have going on. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room with some background noise that we're going to use to test the noise reduction plugin and a gate. So right off the bat, you can see that, um, that the Nectar gate here shows us the threshold that we're dealing with. It shows us a waveform. It's very, very visual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop this little section right here, and we're going to turn on the gate, and we're going to see the noise floor here. This is what you call the noise floor. When the signal that you want to hear, like your VO, stops, what's left is the noise floor. And because I recorded this in a non-treated room, our noise floor is a little bit higher than it would be otherwise. So if I wanted to use a gate to get rid of this noise, I can see, you can see very visually that um, depending on where I open and close this thing, the noise is actually gonna disappear. So I would want the gate to probably be around right there, and that's gonna get rid of the noise floor completely. You can see these little spikes here, that's actually a breath. It's no longer playing. You can see that we've gone from this over here, which is the, uh, the noise floor as it comes in, to this basically gone rid of noise. And the ratio here is a, like 50 to one, so it's gonna go very, very far down. Like it's gonna drop the volume very, very, very far. And you can adjust this to taste. Like maybe you don't want the noise to go completely away. That's gonna make the VO sound unnatural in the case of like being outdoors or something like that. So sometimes you don't wanna use a gate to either reduce the volume of the noise all the way down or reduce it at all. Sometimes you wanna keep that ambient sound because it's going to sound unnatural for the VO if it goes away. The other thing you have to consider with the gate is, like I just said, how it sounds in context. That gate is actually working kind of okay for us. Um, to be honest, I don't reach for gates a lot, but they're a very good tool to reach for if you have a noise floor that you want to drop a little bit. Use them sparingly uh, because, you know, here's what it sounds like if you don't. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room with some background noise that we're going to use to test the noise reduction plugin. That's an overzealous gate. It's working very hard, too hard. So we're gonna lose the gate because it's not something I'm gonna use in this context, but that is how it works. I have Nectar right now as the second processor in my chain, and that's because I'm gonna go and add a noise reduction plugin. Noise reduction is generally the first thing I like to do with vocals because it cleans the tone, it cleans the sound out from the, the background noise and stuff like that, so that when we're getting to EQ and compression, the things that are going to better shape the sound to be even better, we're not dealing with noise. Compression especially, because you're sort of squashing the dynamic range of the sound, and if you have noise in there, 
then it's just gonna get worse. So we're going to use this RX voice denoise thing. Um, there's actually a built-in voice denoiser or just regular denoiser, there's a few um, that come in Audition and there may be a uh, denoise thing that comes with your DAW. So go ahead and check it out. There's a lot of options for noise reduction, but I am a fan of the isotope ones. Uh, so this is very, very easy to use. And we're gonna go ahead and show you what it sounds like on automatic mode. And we're gonna show you how to use the learn mode. And we're also gonna show you what happens when you push it too hard, because it can sound really, really gross. That we're going to use to test the noise reduction plugin and a gate. So you can already see that this noise thing is going. It's trying to adjust to what it thinks the noise is based on the spaces in between the VO, like uh, when I, take a breath between words or take a break between words. It's looking at those spaces and saying, hey, that's the noise. I'm going to try to reduce that noise um, without messing with the vocal. So we're gonna go back to our little spot here that just has nothing in it. And we're gonna go ahead and loop it so we can mess with this bit a little bit. So we have a little breath in there, but mostly this is just room tone. I'm gonna turn this up really high. There's our room. That's our noise floor. I just turned it up 28, almost 30 dB. So you can tell that it's not really an issue when it's down here. But up here, we can hear it and we can say, maybe we want to get rid of that. So uh, if we wanted to adjust the noise at that level, we'd have to turn the threshold up and maybe try the reduction up. And then we start losing the noise. So again, before, after. That sounds pretty cool, right? Well, it's also at that level of reduction going to start affecting the way the VO sounds. So let's go ahead and show you what too much noise reduction sounds like. An example of audio okay. recorded in a non-treated room. So. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. It's hard to hear, especially probably with the compression of the video player that you're listening to right now, but I'll A-B these things again real quick, and maybe you'll be able to hear the slight difference in the way that the high end of the voice and the body of the voice hits when I turn this noise reducer on really, really hard. Um, you're going to lose a little bit of high. It's going to be sort of like a lack of definition in the highs and the lows, um, and it's especially once you start getting into compression and stuff like that, later in the vocal chain, you're gonna hear it really, really badly. So um, let's just go ahead and see if you can hear that real quick. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room. If you caught that, then you know what uh, too much noise reduction sounds like. <laughs> if you didn't, don't worry. It's really subtle, but it does make a difference down the line. So that's an automatic mode. And uh, to be honest, this plugin does a very fantastic job of capturing noise prints on the fly and figuring it out. But if you know what your noise print sounds like, if you know what the noise floor, if you have like a big spot here where someone wasn't talking, then you can use uh, learn mode. Learn mode is going to listen to what I'm about to play it and say, that's the noise, and I'm going to use that print throughout as opposed to changing, adapting to what uh, what the noise may be. All right, we're gonna hit learn, and we're gonna have it listen to this noise print right here. There we go, there's our noise print. Let's go ahead and listen to what it's done for us. This is an example of audio recorded in a non-treated room with some background noise that we're going to use to test the noise reduction plugin and a gate. So it's doing a little bit of work on the highs um, in terms of stuff I don't want it to, but that's okay. Uh, we're just gonna reduce the amount and call it a day. So that's an example of gates and noise reduction, two things that I would consider doing before we move on to the next step, which is gonna be EQ, compression, and de -essing. Those are the main ingredients that I use for making my VO sound better. So let's move on to the other VO channel and see what we can do. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone, in the woods, a mile from any neighbor. Yes, good old Walden Pond. This is recorded in our VO booth that we have professionally treated. It's got a really nice Rode microphone in it. Uh, it's just, it's very nicely set up. So this is gonna sound better and we'll be able to focus on something other than noise reduction and gating. So let's go ahead and pull up that instance of Nectar again. So the first thing that I like to do is reach for an EQ. And an EQ uh, is, stands for equalizer. It is a frequency shaper, meaning that down here we have, go ahead and, and uh, 
move this over here. Down here, we have the lowest frequencies humans can hear, uh, 20 hertz, and up here represents 20 kilohertz, uh, where humans, um, if they had absolutely perfect hearing, could hear up to. Very few of us can actually hear up there. Down here, we have bass, uh, more bass and mud, but also some body down here. The main frequencies that humans actually respond to in the human voice are around 3K. So those are very important, but it's also where uh, things can get a little ugly to the ears. So you have to be very careful. Then we start getting to where the S's and uh, sibilance is. We'll talk about that. And then up here we have air and sparkle, which is very, very important. Let's listen to this and take a look at the frequency graph and talk about what we might want to do to make this voice sound better with our EQ. We'll turn off the compressor right now and when see I what happens. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor. So the first thing I want to do when I talk about this in the article is I want to roll off a bunch of the lows here because there's nothing down there for us to hear and there is a lot of rumble. Nothing that we need to hear down here from the human voice. Um, we probably don't need to hear anything. Depending on the voice, um, you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful because some people might have some lower harmonics that you wanna bring out. But for us, in this case, we're going to house which clear I built out myself. all that super low information. On the shore of Wall And you can see that the EQ is responding. So here's our previous curve right here, and here's where we are now. That's great. The reason that we want to subtract frequencies is because when we get to the compressor, we want to only deal with the volume that uh, represents the frequencies that we actually want to hear. So we're going to carve those out or boost them so that when we get to the compressor, it can do exactly what it's supposed to. Alden Pond. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone, in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. This is a quick and dirty EQ curve for what I would do with this vocal uh, to begin with. We carved out the lows, added a little bit of body right here. We took out a little bit of the muddy mids. Same thing with the harshness around three kilohertz. And then we add a little bit of top end sparkle. The other thing I wanna do is turn on this limiter here because when we boost frequencies like we have here and down here, we may peak higher than when we did when we recorded. So that's why it's really important to record with a certain amount of headroom, which is the amount of space between the uh, tallest peak and zero, which is way up here, which will clip. And you can see that we are getting a little clipping over here while I was messing with that. So this limiter, I'm going to drag down to negative one. That means that the maximum peak of our audio will now be at negative one. We'll have to worry about clipping. And this is gonna come into play very, very importantly later when we use the compressor to boost our signal. So with that, I'm going to add a de -esser. This is another frequency dependent sort of processor, but it works a little differently. There are two kinds of signals that we really kind of want to avoid or process out of our VO. Uh, and that's sibilance, like s s's and ts, very, very gross. Uh, and plosives, which are like puzz and cuz, very, very high impact, high amplitude sounds. So uh, we're going to process the s's now and tame those a bit because they're going to end up being um, unwieldy if we don't. So let's take a listen to just the s's by pushing the little thing right here and hear how it sounds. So you can hear, having soloed the sibilance, that we are pulling down the S's, the K's, the T of the T's, all of those frequencies right there. And those are usually living up here. You can adjust them to taste. And I'm going to give this one more listen and make sure that I'm pulling just what I want out of the frequency spectrum. All right, that sounds good to me. So we'll turn this off now. Rather, the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor. That sounds really good. So when she hits the S's and T's, they're no longer jumping out. They, uh, they sound natural still, and that's what we're looking for. So the next step is gonna be compression. A compressor is the dynamics processor. It processes volume. And like we talked about with the gate earlier, it has similar controls. The first control is the threshold. This controls when the compressor kicks in. The next control is ratio. How much does a compressor reduce the signal after the threshold is reached? After that, you have attack, which is how quickly the compressor reacts to the signal, and then release, how quickly does the compressor release after the threshold has been passed over again. And then we have makeup gain, which we're going to drive into our limiter to raise the volume of our voice to the desired amount. So let's start with a ratio of about 
four. Um, the higher the ratio, obviously, the more reduction that we're going to have. Four is a pretty good place to start. We are going to listen and see uh, what kind of compression ratio that we're looking for. We will get to attack and release in a bit. Following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone, in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. So what I'm going to do real quick, uh, I like this ratio, and we're about, or this threshold, we are at 16.4. I'm going to turn this way down, and you're going to be able to hear what an overcompressed vocal sounds like. It's going to be squashed. It's going to be fighting against itself. It's just going to be very unpleasant to the ears. So let's give it a try real quick just so you can hear what too much compression sounds like. In a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods a mile from any neighbor. There is a certain case for overcompression or very high compression, and that is uh, radio and stuff like that. Um, you know, compression is one of the tools to make your vocals or your music stand out and be uh, louder and more present. And that's great sometimes, but you have to be really careful with it because you can overbake any signal that you overcompress, and that doesn't sound good. So we're going to be uh, ginger with this. We're going to be a, uh, we're going to be nice to it. We're not going to overcompress the signal. So let's go back to about 16 there. In a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. I want you to take a look over here at these two meters. Um, this is our input meter and this is our output meter. And I want you to take a look at how the peaks are different on the two. Um, those high volume um, things that we talked about earlier, like plosives and stuff like that, and the natural cadence of the voice are going to create natural changes in volume that we expect to hear in our ears. But we're going to want to tame those peaks, though, because with those peaks in place, we can't get uh, a big upfront signal like what we're looking for. So take a look at these meters and see what the compressor is doing. You can visually see that those peaks are being tamed. I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. When I wrote the following pages... So I've gone through some pretty chill settings here. Um, my ratio is only 4 to 1. My attack is 2.6 milliseconds. Release is around 17.6. And we haven't gotten to the makeup gain yet. We'll talk about that bit. So we are getting when I wrote the following pages, about, or rather the bulk of them. We are getting between about 1 and 6 dB of compression on our vocal. And uh, that sounds pretty good to me in these headphones right now. Not the best listening environment for what I'm doing right now, but I'm kind of used to them. So it is what it is. Uh, hopefully that you can hear the difference at home. So the next thing we want to do is uh, use the makeup gain here to drive into our limiter a bit to boost the signal. We're going to take a look at our meters down here and see where the vocal is hitting in uh, in peaks in terms of dB. On the shore of Walden Pond, when I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods. So it looks like negative 11 is our highest peak amount right there, and that's very rare. We're mostly down around 14, 17. So we don't want to get to zero, but we want to get pretty close to zero. So let's go ahead and start adjusting our makeup gain. A mile from any neighbor in a house with... And I'm sorry, I'll turn this down if it gets too loud. <laughs> it's been pretty quiet in my headphones this whole time. Make sure I'm not clipping over here. Which I had built myself on the shore of Walden... No, we're not clipping over there. We're fine. Everything's fine. Walden Pond. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, we are not hitting our limiter too much, and that's good. We don't want to over-limit the signal. Just like over-compression is bad, over-limiting is bad too. But we do want the signal to be as hot as it can be so that um, when it gets mixed with music or mixed into um, whatever we're going to make it for, it sounds right to the people that are listening. Uh, there's a certain expectation of volume when you're working with uh, any kind of audio and you want to try to match that. So, look of them, I lived alone. Let's go ahead and uh, A, B these settings here and see if we can tell the difference. We'll start with the EQ. We're going to leave the compressor on because the compressor is what's doing that makeup gain. And if we turn it off, we're going to have a very big perceived volume uh, issue, and we don't want to deal with that. So let's start A being the EQ and see if we can hear the difference. In the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone. Okay. So having heard that, I want to make a couple little adjustments. I think we got a little too much brightness, and I think we might have taken off a little of the too much of the lows. So I'm going to go back and fix those real quick. That sounds pretty good to me. The rest of these tools that are involved here are probably not things that you're generally going to need when you're messing with uh, this kind of VO. Gating, noise reduction, EQ, compression, and uh, de-essing, not necessarily in that order, are the main tools for this kind of thing. And uh, 
I think that you'll be able to do a lot with those. I, I'm going to add a second EQ here and just sort of see if there's anything else I want to do to this to make it sound a little bit better in my ears. So uh, bear with me. I'm just going to check this out real quick. Or rather, the bulk of them. I lived alone, in the woods, a mile from any neighbor. Not bad. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. So... We've talked about gating, we've talked about noise reduction, we've talked about how I like to do those first in the signal chain so that when we get to our tools to make the vocal sound better, we're not dealing with noise. Then we've talked about using an EQ first, so when we get to compression, we're not compressing uh, frequencies that we don't need. We're also using a de before a compressor because that's going to adjust the frequencies of the S's, the sibilants, before we get to the compressor. We then use a compressor to tame the peaks of our audio and uh, give ourselves a makeup gain boost into a limiter so that we have a nice present upfront vocal. Finally, we just dragged another EQ on here to give a tiny bit more sparkle up on the end. Um, this 5K bump here sounded good to me in these headphones. A little bit of mud reduction, another roll off, and just a tiny bump down where the low body is for this particular voice. And that is my method for approaching processing VO, whether it's recorded uh, professionally in a booth like ours or uh, in a less professional setting like what I'm doing right here. If you'd like to learn more about this kind of stuff, we've got a whole creative toolkit for marketers on YouTube, on the VMG website. You can subscribe uh, in both places if you want. If you're on YouTube here, subscribe to the channel, check out the little bell. I think it's in the right. Is it over here? Tap the bell for notifications. If you go to our website, we have a bunch more articles and content like this. So sign up there, get stuff delivered to you, whatever works for you. It's cool. My name is Jeremy. This is VMG Studios. And thank you for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful day.